Holy Hyperia. Hello, guys, and welcome down to the Chain Dogs podcast, episode 101. Today, it's just me and Mikhail and you lovely people in the chat. How's everyone doing? How you doing, Mikhail? You all right? I'm good. I'm good. I'm chilling. That's a lie. I'm not chilling at all, but I'm good. <laughs> this is gonna. This is gonna oh be God. a. Chi- this is gonna be a chill cast. This is gonna be yeah. a, <laughs> Kyle's chill cast. Back back to the days, like you said. In my opinion, you brought that up. Why, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You watched that before. Uh, that was that was good. That's a throwback now. That is a throwback. That's crazy so this thing. Is that was a... four years ago that we did those. Wow, really? <laughs> four years? I'm pretty sure. Was oh, it 2020 man. or 2021? That is crazy. One of those. <laughs> like, that it's that long ago yeah <laughs> that is that is mad 25 people watching let's say hello to the chat we've got half an hour oh, i've been chatting shit chat. into a microphone on camera for you've four been chatting loads <laughs> into a microphone bro <laughs> and on youtube and you say oh, I, might, I might go and just film some rise and start a youtube channel bro you're wrong <laughs> i was thinking bad so when you said that <laughs> uh. All right, so I John, we've got Kira, we've got ads, we've got uh, out and back, we've got Mark. Hey, what's up, Mark? We've got um, Bork 15, if you don't say you say it, <laughs> and we've got Coaster Giant. How is everyone doing in the chat? Um, are you all excited for Hyperia? We are, we're going to touch on Hyperia in a little bit, but we've got um, to be fair, uh, we've got we've, we've like just we've going through. <laughs> I've been keeping tra- I've been keeping track. I mean, long story short, we've got a fucking like shopping list of news to get to to, I mean, choose, yeah. to choose from. And, ev- and, and I inevitably, when you go shopping with a list, you forget something. So if we forget right. something, let us know. <laughs> <in the> comments. <laughs> like, let us know what you want to talk about as well, because I mean, like, like literally, I've I've been keeping track of stuff, just like just keeping an eye on like news as I as I see it like throughout the week, and I'm like. We're going to have, it, it literally last night when I was putting it all together, I was like, we're going to have, like, enough for, like, three or four shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the parks are all starting to open up now, and then, you know, there's just more and more stuff going on, just, just which is super so, cool. But, so much, man. There's so much to go through. I but, think. Yeah. We'll, so let, uh... us know what you, let us know what you want to, um, if you have anything that you want to discuss or ask us about, just throw it in the, throw in the chat. And we'll just yeah. pick out stuff that we want. We will. But I think um, <laughs> from the off, I think we should uh, check out Voltron's little video they posted um, with the announcement of the opening date. Should we check it out? Mm. If you're listening to this on Spotify, by the way, watch the video. <laughs> <laughs> no skates. Yeah. Is that your mind? Erlebe die Achterbahn-Sensation 2024 mit sieben Überkopfelementen, vier Beschleunigungen und dem steilsten Katapultstart weltweit einzigartig. Der neue Multilaunch-Coaster im Europapark. Voltron Nevera. Powered by Remax. Ab 26. April im neuen kroatischen Themenbereich. Oh, there we go. 26th of April, Voltron mm-hmm. opens. What are your opinions on this, on this coaster? Like, I know you've, you've definitely got some heavy opinions of it. <laughs> I... It's funny because, like, my uh, sort of just reception of it has changed a lot like as as um the animations like first came out and then like when construction like went through and everything and seeing it test and stuff i think it looks I, i'm still not 100 percent sure if it'll be like top 10 worthy but i mm-hmm. do think it's gonna be such a fun coaster like i think it's gonna be so much so much fun there's so much going on in the layout that it's gonna it's gonna make it's gonna make me real happy just in terms of its variation and like it looks like it look like the same things i said about copperhead strike in terms of just how varied it is force wise a lot of positive moments a lot of, a lot of uh differing like strengths of air time yeah, which is obviously a match well, exactly exactly yeah, yeah obviously it's a obviously it's not like a standard sit down but like um 
it looks like there's it looks like there's going to be a lot of different forces and sensations and force switches at play that it's going to be really interesting from start to finish and then with the seats that it has like the look the, the, like the elements look like they play on accentuating different forces where like depending on where you're sitting so if you're on a wing mm-hmm. seat and you hit that um there's like a sideways airtime hill like like somewhere in the somewhere in the return leg i think that looks yeah. like the the forces and all like combinations of forces are going to be really quirky and the entire layout looks littered with moments like that so i really I, so i really think it's going to be it's going to be so so much so so much fun like from start to finish and it's going to be interesting to see how how much of how much of that can carry it to like you know where like where you would rank it like if you would rank it highly and stuff yeah i think um for me it's the coaster that's maybe want to go to Europa Park more than anything they've built. Yeah, and because yeah. and it's just so interesting looking. Literally, Kira just put it in the chat. Is the it coaster that Europa Park needed? I yeah, I, I fully hundred agree. I've not it's been like not not having not been sorry to get you off, but like having yeah, yeah, not yeah. Be, having not been to Europa Park. Same. There are other versions like like people people who have been say the. You know, uh, Silver Star's good but not elite. Wodan's good but not elite. Blue Fire's good but like not great, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, about like what other what other coasters are there? Yeah. The, like for me, just looking at looking at their lineup, you know, outside of Voltron, they have fun coasters there, but I've already done other versions of those coasters elsewhere. Like I've already I've already I've done I've done you know, multiple BNM hypers. I've ridden multiple uh, multi-launch coasts. I've ridden multiple GCI woodies and like, th- like all right, all right. I don't <laughs> think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, flex, but <laughs> but um, like, I, there, I, I can't really think of any other coasters that I've done that will really give you the type of experience that Voltron will do. No, we'll, we'll absolutely, I, I, and I think that's the same same for me. Like what I've yeah. ridden is what I've ridden, and I think quite a few people from the UK will be in a similar boat as me. Like they've ridden all everything in the UK, most of the stuff in Europe, Fantasia Land as well. And it's like, all right, Voltron, you know what? This thing looks different to everything that I've seen. Um, mm. Obviously, it's a play on the Mac Big Dipper, but even that, like Lost Gravity, looked amazing to me. That that's a coast that makes me want to go out. And, and go to that park. Mm. Voltron is the coast that makes me want to go to Europa. Although Europa Park is probably absolutely brilliant and fe- you know themed to the to the nines. And yeah. I feel like this this being there and then me going at this point will be more beneficial for me as a coaster enthusiast um, to enjoy that park more. And it'll probably make me want to go back more as well. Yeah. Um, but I, I do, I do feel like um, it, it's time to visit, which is great because I've always wanted to go, but I've just not had the push. Like, oh, there's blue fire. I was like, I don't know. I don't know what it is it's about, about stars your, because like, it looks go- like the themed areas look gorgeous. gorgeous. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely gorgeous. And like um, someone, someone mentioned in the chat who uh, Lloyd like mentioned. I don't know about I'm calling them the king of dark rides, but but like <laughs> the dark ride selection that they have looks to be high quality, even in terms of like the likes of Arthur as well. Arthur looks great in terms of just a family a family coaster with you know significant dark ride sections. And yeah. so I don't know what it, I don't I don't know what it is like in terms of a themed attraction enthusiast. I should be all over like going right. there as quick as soon as possible, but yeah. Maybe maybe it is just the the uh, the coaster co- the coaster lineup that it has that has me just like being a bit reserved from it as well. Maybe that's maybe that's why I was more inclined to get to Fantasyland as soon as possible rather than Europa Park. But um, I think it'd be I really know, nice I, it's always been like, yeah, yeah. Three, it's four, always been eight. somewhere that I that I'm like I'll get there eventually. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Voltron yeah. does Voltron does give me a bit more of a push to be like. Yeah, let me try. And, let me try and figure out a trip around getting there. Yeah, right. I, I I agree. Um, that's exactly how I feel about it. And um, 
the fact that it's all come together now, their lineup seems a bit more solid. Like you can get on Silver Star, Blue Fire. Like, you name some really good rides. You know, some very mm. good, <laughs> very good coasters. And it's just um, to do all their man Voltron would be, wow, it'd be perfect. I think. Yeah. Um, and then to experience the dark rides and all the attractions and shows and everything, you need to spend a good few days there, like riding the coasters, doing yeah, the dark rides, huge. checking out the attractions. Checking yeah. out the flats, doing, yeah. doing the shows, real Antica. It's, like, <laughs> it's right, like, yeah. There's so much on like, and on and on, adrenaline, and on and on. like dark ride restaurant or whatever the hell. That oh is. yeah, the, the, yeah. The, as well, like the that thing looks restaurant. Well, that thing looks interesting. <laughs> R- rise of the restaurant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, um, do, I um, guess um, one th- one thing like, and I. Th- think this has been confirmed but i'm not 100 percent sure that um all of the theming around the ride experience of voltron hasn't been finished yet it's going to be finished by next year like right. i think predominantly around the turntable section like halfway through the layout um there's still a lot of thematic effects to be you know installed in that little section that i think aren't gonna that i think might not be finished until like what is it 25 <laughs> I'm losing track of which year it is oh, yeah, um same <laughs> yeah and, yeah it's, it's supposed to not be finished by 20 tw- until 2025 so um yeah. d- whether whether that sways your decision to get out there or not i know a lot of people still are rushing out together right but, um it's a good point though. yeah i mean if, it's, if they've announced it's not gonna well it might not have announced but if they said that they're not gonna have it fully finished this year then I Wait. think it has been communicated. I'm not sure they made a, a whole announcement about it, but I think it's been you communicated. Just, have you just done some breaking that's... news there on the Chain Docs podcast live on YouTube? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> 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 yeah. Maybe I just uh, saved someone a couple hundred pounds. <laughs> 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 no, uh, Lo- Lloyd makes, makes a pretty good uh, topic there. Do you think Fantasia needs to start planning the next investment triggered by Voltron? I think Phantasialand have had uh, got their next few years planned out for the last few years. <laughs> to be honest, yeah, to be fair, <laughs> I don't. I, I don't reckon. think any. I don't think anything that we'll see from Phantasialand for the next few years has been triggered by Voltron, so to speak. I feel like they've had that planned out maybe since before Fly opened. Honestly, yeah, yeah, um, probably. But yeah, I mean, like you know, there's like they've always had their um, goals of expansion you know, just, like, on the horizon, like, and their continuous battles with the local um, local authorities and local council about, you know, whether yeah. they can expand and stuff. I mean, them houses um, are pretty close if you walk behind to, the, to that bottom end of the park yeah, where the battle yeah. galleons thing is. is like, they're literally on the cliff. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. When I was first um, shooting a vlog around Fantasyland and James was like, yeah, that that they're the people who, who live there. I'm like, what? Yeah. Like, they literally <laughs> back onto the park. They've got the best view in the world. It's great. They literally across. They literally live across the road from. I know. That place. <laughs> so why would you not want that place to look even better than it is? I don't. I never understood that. Like, why would you not want somewhere you live next to to be better? Like, because it's. it's I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. It's just mad. Always, like, not in my backyard, kind of people. Like they. Or they chose to live in a house like, next to a theme uh, park, literally in the fucking yeah. backyard. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. like, come on, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> play the game. <laughs> but yeah, um, like, to, yeah, to add's point as well. Like, Fantasyland is like a is is like a four hour journey from Europa Park at least. I think of Germany, like it's in a completely different region, servicing a completely different market. Like <laughs> yeah, um, like Europa Park. Um, I'm, I'm like Europa. Europa Park are more so on the level of that kind of international tourist destination with with the likes of like Disneyland Paris and Efteling and, yeah. and stuff. Whereas Fantasyland, like yeah, they get a lot of international tourists, but the park is tiny in comparison. Like, yeah. um, I think, and I mean, like it's not black and white at all. Like they, um. But I, I feel like their reach is more so regional than than um, regional and potentially national. 
Rather yeah, what, than I found, what I found well, funny when I went to Fantasyland was well, the amount of Efteling posters I saw everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, literally every bus stop we drove past, we left, yeah. it was like, there, there is an Efteling poster. An Efteling poster. So Hell, I swear I saw, I saw Efteling um, uh, posters on like the side of buses in England. I swear I've seen that. I swear really? I've seen that before. Yeah. Wow. I don't maybe down in that. maybe down in London. Um oh wow. No, I've never seen that. Let us know in the comments if you've ever seen that. That's that's <laughs> pretty rare. <laughs> the Efteling bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Imagine imagine if every theme park just had a bus you could just get on and go. Like even if it took you like four days, we'd just go. <laughs> it'd, be <laughs> it'd be cool. Just uh, everywhere in Europe, just from London would be brilliant. Um, it gives me a cheaper alternative to flying everywhere, then I'd be all for it. <laughs> uh it's so expensive compared to 10 years ago wow yeah there's a lot of romantic is amazing from laura europa, europa park is bucket list park since the edition of voltron from graham to be blogs um if you haven't if you've never been to europa park from super bart well uh, wait till 2025 for the 50th birthday no any people will come with something mm. special yeah yeah that's that's really good you know Efteling is wild with the market. <laughs> yeah. Do you think they just go around with like a bucket of paste and loads of posters and just slam them up in bro? Like yeah. <laughs> just throw them up everywhere. <laughs> they just don't build like outside, outside of every other park in mainland Europe. <laughs> Literally just turn up to like Disneyland Park at the security gates and just go and then run off. Imagine turning up outside Liseberg and just seeing an Efteling poster outside the entrance. <laughs> I might take one just for the lol. <laughs> like, just to see how people would react out of the enthusiast <laughs> group being there. That'd, that'd be brilliant. That'd be brilliant. But yeah. Um, yeah, so let us let us know what you think of Voltron in the comments. And if you've got any questions on it as well, further on in the show, just let us know in the chat. We'll, mm -hmm. We're going to try and get to as many questions and stuff from the chat as possible. Um, but yeah. Uh, should we talk about Park Asterix? Yeah, Asterix, I was just going to say staying in Europe. Um, yeah, yeah. Park Asterix, and, I, and I'm not I'm not sure if this has been common knowledge at all, or just something I saw in the last few days, that they actually announced themselves that um, the uh, Tone, Tonea 2 Zeus, the revamp... I'm glad you pronounced the, that, and not me. Gravity group, uh, the Gravity Group revamp they did of Tonea de Zeus, um, that originally had their backward, like the backwards row um, of at least one train. I don't know if it did it with both trains, but um, at least one train turn around to face backwards. <laughs> they've announced that they're not doing that anymore um, and turn it around just to make it a normal backward row. Now, it was originally an upcharge to ride, really? it, back, to ride it backwards, yeah. Which I, um, I think they then made cheaper i can't remember the figures i can't remember how much they charged for it but um they made it cheaper and then made it free and now are just straight up not doing it anymore which i mean it raises questions it raises questions to me about um how like obviously obviously it wasn't that popular um and it raises questions to me about how the retrack actually went because I've seen a lot mm. of people talking about like they preferred, you know, Tone de Zeus the original, and that I've heard a lot of talk about about the Timberliners aren't great on it. Uh, wow, like it's gotten really rough. They're normally really pretty quickly. reliable trains as well. Like they're normally pretty good when you throw them on a track. They're normally pretty decent, quick, and you know, apart from the restraints, the restraints yeah. seem to be a bit of a. Well, I mean, it's it's kind of. Um, to me, it seems kind of hit and miss because there are um, other gravity group coasters out there that use Timberliner trains that have that, are, that have served them really well, and then there are some others that have been fucking awful, based on what people have uh, said about them. Right. Um, this unfortunately seems to be trending towards the latter. Um, you know, others like Mind Blower. I mean, like Mind Mind Blower's a, a a special case because it wasn't actually. <clears throat> have you Have you ridden that since? Um, I've ridden it. It wasn't great. <laughs> um, have you ridden? I, it I didn't really think it was as bad as people made out to be, but um, wow. like uh, but it wasn't uh 
Gravity Group or Martin and Vlemix that actually did the construction for it. Yeah, that, yeah. That's the only thing. So, um, but yeah, no, I, th I think, um, I think Timberliners just like overall are trains that need to be used on gravity group layouts that have been designed specifically for Timberliners. I don't yeah, really think it's time. working that, um, I don't really think it's working to just throw Timberliners on, on just like any, like any, uh, yeah. Way or like, or any, just any random gravity group retrack. They, they ride weird. well in a specific way, don't they? That's, that's yeah. what I've always seen, like, which is why small compacts. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like it worked, it it works really well on Kentucky Flyer at Kentucky mm -hmm. Kingdom. That yeah. that I all I always have ridden that a few times now. I I found that to be really uh, in terms in terms of how the train like tracks on the actual on the actual track. Like I found that to be comfortable. Um, the actual coaster itself doesn't do that much, but I mean it's a family, you know, it's a family. Did it have much time? Time Just to go off. Uh, yeah, it's not that strong. Again, like it's a small family coaster, nice. so like it's, well, it's, a bit of, it's a bit of fun. And yeah. then others like um, Wooden Warrior at Quasi Amusement Park, somewhere in the northeast of the United States, that's supposed to run really well as well. Um, and then uh, uh, Oscar's Wacky Taxi at Sesame Place, which I mean, I mean, operations of that coaster of that coaster are an entirely different conversation, but it's supposed to it's supposed to run quite well. Um, What's going to be interesting about the Timberliner trains is when Bobcat opens up at Six Flags Great at uh, the Great Escape, um, because that is an entirely yeah. that is that is a new coaster opening up at that park that's entirely Gravity Group pre-cut track specifically designed to run Timberliners. So nice. it's going nice. to be in, it's going to be really interesting to see how smooth that is from from you know when it opens and how long it stays uh a yeah. comfortable a comfortable ride and i think that i think that will dictate a lot of what gravity group does in terms of their implement in the future in terms of their implementation implementation with timberlands with the, with the trains yeah no that's that's a yeah. freaking good point you nail it on the head um <clears throat> ads has brought up the uh the, the fact that also for capacity the backwards row has been replaced by two forwards rows due to the lack of zero car as well. Yeah, yeah. which I'll, I'll makes sense as well from a park standpoint, from a management standpoint, and capacity standpoint. Um, there's all these reasons, but I mean, what kind of annoys me is that when parks upcharge for these experiences and then just let them be free, like a couple of years later, it's like I, sometimes yeah. it really knocks me. You know, like if someone if, if you imagine now if they just made Enzo free, yeah, on Icon. It was like, like, what was the point in making it a fifteen pound charge in the first place? Yeah, what is the point? <laughs> like, I, <laughs> it's, it, it just like baffles me. Well just made it free from yeah, yeah. Uh, I've never really, you know, I've never really vibed with that as a gimmick. Like no, to, to begin with, I know like a lot. I know like a lot of people, yourself included, like liked brave it backwards on the swarm. Oh, the swarm, yeah, but the swarm. Come on, man. Like the swarm's like freaking high. So yeah. wing coaster, yeah. you go through theming elements, you go through fire, you go through a sign, you go through, you know, all well, the mm. fountains, you go over the station backwards. That, <laughs> yeah. me, that that to me is it's more than a gimmick. That's an experience and it's one that I will never forget from the swarm and it's one that I hold dear in my heart. Like mm. I remember riding back row and the flames had just gone and the the gas ball was still around and we went <laughs> right through it. I just remember that that feeling of banking over into the into the non inverted, and I was just like, "This is this is so cool." <laughs> this is this I think, is. Um, I think there are certain uh, instances where it can really add a lot to yeah. to the um, to the experience. Like people rave about the backwards row on DC Rivals as well. Right, like a lot of people, right. a lot of people that rank it really highly, rank it as highly as they do because of the back row. Backward row, yeah. So I think there, yeah. I think there are um, times, like different times, where it where it can work, but some of them just seem like a cash grab, and a lot of them don't really add much else. Like with like with Enzo, like if you have to not only pay fifteen pounds to get on the Enzo row, mm. but then have to also just be like, oh, I have to ride it myself in order to get a good spin on it, instead of mm. actually enjoying it with somebody. Yeah, then it's like, like, 
I'd rather, I'd rather, just, ride, I'd rather just ride the back row forward. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the, well, the back row and icons. One of the, best. <laughs> the, the, the back row and icon forwards at night is an experience, man. That, that's it's my favorite row. It's my favorite row on the train. A fun ride. I mean, I like yeah. the front just because of the views you get going through the tunnel, and then you pop up, and then if you if you catch the big one coming up the lift hill, mind blowing. But mm. like, and then the the airtime you get as well from the front from the, the rise into into the top part that's always fun um but the back row fuck when that thing's been running all day it's nighttime beautiful yeah so the fact that enzo doesn't spin that much with two people on at night as well like after a, a good run throughout the day i mean what's the point exactly <laughs> like i said i like i said normalized just not having uprush up charge rows on coast. Yeah, just stick another queue line in. So if you want to stand in it for two hours, let it be someone's decision. Like legit. <laughs> like that's, that's that's the best way to go with it. Like to roll about to roll a Baz's question, what coaster would you never want to ride backwards? Because <laughs> that'd be Grand funny. National. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I'm a <laughs> Oh, there, you yeah. there you go. There you go. But you know what would be you know what would be pretty fun at Blackpool backwards though? Avalanche. That'd be cool. That'd be different. Yeah, to be honest, that'd be that'd, be, that'd, that'd have some yeah, that'd be, that'd be kind of fun. <laughs> that'd be cool. I think that'd be cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ten percent cut. Pleasure Beach Resort, if you're watching. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just think any... I'm all for these upcharges. Don't worry about any it. Not, <laughs> any not well-cared-for wooden coaster, I do not want to ride backwards. <laughs> I steeple chase. Steeple backwards. Yeah. I wonder what Wicker Man would ride like backwards. I reckon that'd be quite fun. I can't really envision how it would be you see like any dr- any more drastically different than riding it forwards other than you can't see each transition coming that's that's the, th- that's, the, that's the thing yeah. about it like yeah that's the that's the thing about these backwards rows like it's got a, like i feel like the um the coaster itself has to be doing something really out like outlandish like to um really add a different experience to like by doing it backwards, yeah. so I think it works on DC Rivals. I think that's why, that's why it works on the Swarm because mm. you're doing a lot of aerobatic different elements. Mm. Which and, and I mean, like, I mean, like this is entirely why this is is it entirely why like like spinning or rotating on Rider Happiness works so well because <laughs> the elements are already batshit mental as they are, and then taking them at different like facing different directions. Just I think what'd be over. cool about Wicker Man backwards would be the amount of fire you'd see because you don't really see the show scene when you're going through Big Bob. It's like yeah. once you go through, you go through it that quick, it's, it's done. Apart from the second time you go through after the turn and then the little boy yeah. hops and then down, that bit you see it. But to look back at it like on fire would be, I think that'd be pretty sweet at night. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Um, Oblivion. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of different oh, rides. Yeah. dive coasters. Dive coasters, man. Imagine just dive coasters in general would yeah. be pretty fun. Yeah, it would that view of the track going back, especially would Oblivion? Be, yeah, that would be something. You won't know when the hole would be coming, and that sounds exactly weird, but you would <laughs> just be like, woof, like be, be mad. Let us know in the comments what uh coaster you like to ride backwards or what you, you wouldn't strike like to ride a backwards back. would be insane. Yeah, that I might drop be. into the into the hole in the ground. That would be, <laughs> that would be my any dive. I literally, I think any dive coaster yeah. like, would be, would be mad. Yeah. Um, <sighs> moving on. <laughs> <laughs> um, Project three hundred five. We'll talk about um, that. Yeah. So, um, so King's Dominion have shared some uh, photos. So, so okay. So Cedar Fair. Um, are just basically retheming their their coast their two coasters Intimidator three hundred five at Kings Dominion and Intimidator at Carowinds, um, because basically they like the license the license with Dale Earnhardt well the da- the Earnhardt family for Dale Earnhardt the the uh, famous NASCAR driver just like, NASCAR expired man. basically and they didn't want and they didn't want to renew the for whatever reason they decided not to renew the license so um. 
that's why uh, Intimidator, Intimidator at Carowinds is called Thunderstriker now and Intimidator 305 at, at, at um, King's Dominion um, has been renamed temporarily to Project 305. Um, which te which te like so they announced the placeholder like temporary rename of the project and hinted at you know the re the rethink that that it's going to that they're going to give it and um there's a there's there's a fair there's a couple of clues in in that name in in the sign that um that you just put up, that we just put up there with yeah. the X in the middle of the zero and the leopard print or cheetah print or whatever, like in the back, like on the background of the sign as well. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of there's a lot of cheetah three five. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, talk that <laughs> someone said it. I O three I O three O five backwards would be death. Yes, it would. Wow, I three O five forwards is death. <laughs> you think backwards would be yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um. The one with that says that excavations dig site is that one as well? Don't pull that one up. I've got that picture. Is that for the same thing? Wait, say that again. This one? <laughs> yeah, no. That? So yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, yeah. Was it last? Oh, was it last year or the year before? Um, Kings Dominion opened uh, like just opened up their reimagining of the area of the park where a couple of flat rides and their uh Mark bobsled ride, um. What was it? What did it used to be called? Avalanche, funnily enough. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, good name. Good used name. to be the the Hus top spin. The crypt was there. They rethemed that entire area to just a jungle area, basically called it Jungle Expedition. They opened an SNS 4D free spin there called uh, Tumbili. Was it Tumbili? I think it was Tumbili. Um, it looks it looks really nice. Like it, it looks it looks really good. A lot of intricate thematic detail went into that re-theming and reimagining of that area. There's a lot of thinking that the I-305 re-theme re is going to be included into that. And there's a lot of hints that seem to point in that direction as well. Which yeah. I think will be which I think will be great for it. Like I I like I like that idea. The only thing is Flight of Fear is uh, is also right next to I three hundred five, so it's just going to be sitting there, space themed, alien themed, just like by itself. <laughs> um, we have a dungeons next to Gangster Granny. What can we say? Very <laughs> so um, they are like like it's going to be interesting to see how they um, tie that in if they try to tie it, tie it in at all but I, yeah. I do like i do like the idea of a jungle expedition retheme um for i305 and seeing how they'll tie that in into that rethemed area as well the the the, the second photo you showed um was the side yeah yeah so um there's also been a lot of talk that the um Kings Dominion are going to be opening something pretty big for 2025 as well. There's a lot of talk that it might be a launched BM wing coaster. Um oh, and like that. <laughs> it seems as though they're going to tie that coaster into that area as well. I mean it's it's going on the plot where Volcano the Blast Coaster used to be, which oh, wow. was which was right next to um uh the Mark Bobsled coaster now called Reptilian. Um, so it's right there in the area. It'll, it'll, they'll be able to tie it in like pretty easily. Um, what, whatever kind of story they want to tell with that attraction, I don't know. But and the fact they're putting a launch in as well in the same sort of areas. Actually, I like, I like that. I like it when yeah. parks do that. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. launches back to the previous attractions in the area. I love for it when they do for that. sure. And the, the, um, like, there was a lot of there was a lot of talk from people just like, oh, they like. Volcano was volcano was heralded um, as a, as an attraction. It was loved by a lot of a lot of people, not only just in the um, you know in the state of Virginia, but just like a, a, among enthusiasts everywhere. Yeah, pretty much. It, US I think everywhere. I think any video I watched of it online had more than a million views. Any video, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, for sure. I unfortunately, when I worked at Bush Gardens Williamsburg. Um, it closed pretty like I think less than a month before I got there for the summer. 
So the entire time that I was at Bush Bush Gardens Williamsburg in 2018, it was closed. Otherwise, I would have gone to ridden it. <laughs> I would have gone uh, to ride it, uh, um, which was which is which is sad. But that's yeah. what it is. Um, I get them all, man. I've made my peace with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there's there was a lot of talk about uh, like whatever replaces volcano, like it has to be up to stand. It has to, yeah, you know, be something substantial. It has to be good. It has to be worthy of taking the place of volcano. And from like the layouts, the layouts that I've seen, um, the speculated layouts, like from uh, footer plans and stuff like that, like yeah. people have people have put together their own uh like i guess just guesses at what the layout yeah. could be um and they look decent like it looks like what what they could what they could do with it um uh looks like it's gonna have a lot of a lot of good moments in it it looks like it might be a really fun layout what they're planning yeah. so i'm interested to see what that'll end up being as well <laughs> for sure yeah yeah what have you, um, what have you seen have you seen have you seen anything um, no, no, I actually no, no, I haven't. But now you mentioned that, I am going to go and have a look. Um, launch wing coasters, man. There needs to be more of them. Like they, yeah. they look so <laughs> yeah. much fun. They look Thunderbird, so much fun. Thunderbird is my favorite BNM wing coaster. I just love wing coasters because of the launch. <laughs> yeah, I just love wing coasters. Being on the side of the track is just such a a weird sensation. It's like mm. you're either going over an element or you're going underneath an element, and it's like. You can go on it multiple times, different seats, front, back, just to get different experiences. Like the rewritability of a wing coaster, that, that's what I love about them. I, I really do. I think I think they offer something a lot to a park and a lot yeah. to a guest as well. A guest experience on a on a wing coaster is always fun. Like there are fun for example, for just like even just splitting the station. You know, like are you going to go left? Are you going to go right? Like yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. That's a, that's, it's like a fun. A decision to make. It's like them old books you used to have in school where you like decide which route you would take. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's really fun. I love it. Like you get to a swarm and you're like, I'm go left, right. Mm. Uh, and then you're just like, yeah, you gotta go left. Oh, okay. Go Speaking left. of swarm <laughs> as well. Um oh, yeah. I did hear I did hear from uh opening weekend that Thorpe of Thorpe Park have apparently made the vests on swarm like oh so, so that they don't lock down on you. And stay oh, wow. locked down like throughout the ride. Not, not they've made, them so, that, they've made them so that they're more breathable now, which is all really? I could have ever asked for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for yeah. Not only Swan, but just any wing, any wing coaster. Because like just like I had I had to basically make sure it was at a at a you know at a point. So I had to stick my chest out when like when you're in the, when you're in when it's loaded when it's loading when they're loading yeah. the train and waiting to go off. And then just just to make sure there's enough room, and then just keep the vest there as you go all the way around. Yeah. So to not have to think about doing that anymore. Yeah. Like Gatekeeper is really Gatekeeper at Cedar Point is really enjoyable when you don't have to when you don't have to do all that. And then obviously Thunderbird is awesome as well. Yeah. Um, Wild Eagles at Dollywood used to lock, and then they unlocked theirs a few years ago as well. So right. So that the the fact the fact that Thorpe have gone ahead and done that. Fucking finally, is a very good thing a... that needs to be. That needs to be. Yeah, um, they need to be. They need to be. That's great. They're listening to. That. to that's great though. Farp have listened to the feedback of the, the swarm specifically. B and M have probably had something to say about it as well. Like mm. people giving the trains a bit of shit, you know, for 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 locking up in the ride experience, not feeling great. I personally, I've never had a problem with the swarm, but um, I, I yeah, I'm looking out. That that's made me like proper hyped for riding Swarm again now. Yeah, we've got Hyperia, but I want to see what that feels like because obviously <laughs> I've only ever done one B and M wing, which is the Swarm. <laughs> so yeah, I want to feel that. Want to feel that not restricted feeling when you're going around. So when do you think about getting down there? So it's I've booked old. opening day. <laughs> I've booked opening day, mm -hmm. but. Whether or not it happens, just it's on a Friday. It's really awkward. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I did think that when I when I saw it, and I mean, we can get into the opening opening um stuff like later on. We but might as well get I on it now. We're on it. Should we should we play the video? Let's play the video. Sure. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about Hyperia. This was released by Fart Pat today. Enjoy. Make sure you watch the mm. podcast if you're listening on Spotify. <laughs>
Find your fearless twenty fourth of May. Can I just can I just say about that about that about that video? For whatever reason, I just really love that they brought in the um the I'm a score like yeah, instrumentation, like just for the thought part, like um it like uh, animation at the end. Yeah. For whatever reason, I just I just really like that they added that as just like a little accent at the, <laughs> at the end. I don't know why. That is great. It's, uh, they did it with Reborn as well. Merlin did it with Reborn, which was cool. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, but yeah, May 24th. <laughs> there's also yeah, when, if, I, if when you, I saw it was on a Friday, I was like, that might like just X out a lot of people from being able to go. Yeah. But then it's also like, that's the date. That's it's. They said in the in the social media post, like, it's, it's Thorpe's 45th year of operations like it's literally their first like their 45th birthday like yeah. the park's 45th birthday so it, 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 make, it makes sense but yeah oh it's cool um there's a lot of uh for any uh theme park music nerds out there there's a lot of things in that video that we've not heard before from the soundtrack so go back and listen to it there's some really mm. cool stuff in there um but I, I'm so hyped for Hyperion, man. Like, I really, I really am. Uh, and I hope I can get there on opening. It'd be great to do Nemesis and Hyperion one year. That'd be enough yeah. for me. Like, right, that's fine. Like, I don't need to do <laughs> that. The irony is, I'm going to Florida two weeks later. I was about to say, so you don't need to go to Florida, man? <laughs> <laughs> no. Like, you're all, cool. like, you're all good. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm good for UK parks, I think, once I, once I get back. <laughs> it's been hectic, man. It's been hectic. It's great. But, um, Oh yeah, wait, wait, quick. Let, no, let's let's do this, right? And let's see how many people in uh, on the vlogs. Because what I really loved about our show before opening of Nemesis was we were all guessing what the queue times were, yeah. and we we're all like stood there in, in Forbidden Valley, like, yeah, we were so fucking wrong, man. Like we were so. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want I want to have that conversation with people again. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I'm gonna say four and a half. Four and a half hours for me. That's that's what I'm going to say. Um, do you know? Do you know what's yeah. funny as well about about Nemesis's, um, you know, like the Q line reaching however long it reached. Like I did, yeah, I did see, um, like it reached like four and a half hours. The 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 Q board said like two hundred seventy five minutes and stuff. I saw multiple people saying that that's that's not necessarily as long as it got. That's just the maximum amount of time that the cue boards can show. <laughs> oh, really? Wow. <laughs> I didn't I didn't know that. I saw, I saw oh, a few different people say that. Wow. So like so in, re in reality the queue line could have gone way longer. <laughs> that is, that is way off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um yeah so um I, I I I yeah I hope I can get out there and, and ride it and I'm sure everybody who's in this chat right now will, will be will be trying to get there as, as much as they can. But again it's on a Friday, it's bank holiday weekend, I think. That's what um I think Matt just said that actually. Uh, uh sure. someone said it. Oh I'm going to go in the Wednesday to Thursday after the bank holiday weekend is when the coaster opens. So oh, that's yeah. great. Right. Okay, that's my. I mean, four, a, a, I mean, what spring bank holiday is usually at the end of May, so. Right? Yeah, four four hours. I would imagine though, worth bearing in mind, while its capacity is roughly half of them, it's just the park capacity is also much lower. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I, and it's a it's a shorter ride as well. Um, it is shorter ride, and it's gonna have some teething problems. <laughs> I keep saying this every time a new ride opens, like. Just have patience. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, I feel like everyone did for Nemesis until it went down in the evening. That was a bit of a piss take. But um, being told to evac the queue and then they ran the trains after, which was mm. which was was just just a really bad. Thing, yeah. Just to be honest. With you. Um, it just seemed like a miscommunication between departments. Oh, it was massive. Um, we were we were in the queue, yeah. right? Just just from quickly, quickly. From IP. We were in the queue line and it was pissing down. And I mean pissing down. I work outside for a living and I was soaking wet. Right. Mm -hmm. We were stood there for like an hour and a half, hour and 45, and we were just up by the cannon. We'd come round. We we're just about to go up behind the first drop. And then Phalanx staff came down and told us to evac the queue. 
Now, what they were saying on the Tanai was completely different. They weren't saying we're, we're evacuating the queue. They were saying like they were just going to, we don't know how long it's going to take. But like, they didn't say we've closed Nemesis for the evening. Um, we're sorry, sort of thing. N nothing like that happened. And someone actually said from the, from the station, oh, we're going to be reopening soon. Oh, no, no, we don't know when we're going to be opening. Like that is literally what happened over the Tanai in the yeah. queue. And we were like, what? But then everyone started leaving. Obviously, it's chucking it down. So people with an opportunity to leave a queue, if they want to yeah. go, they can go. They're not going to hold back because it's because it was absolutely terrible. It was biblical, the weather. <laughs> it was bad. Yes, yeah, so, um, yeah. Fucking um, Sean mentioned in our well, Sean messaged in our chat like two days later, and I, I, I'm still, I'm, I'm still, still not trying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still not trying. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, right. So I was at the front of the queue and got kicked out. Yeah, I know quite a few people with the same yeah. similar story. So I just hope that we don't have a sour moment like that to dampen um, Hyperia. But yeah. I, I, I do I do feel um, there's going to be a lot of people there. But I also feel like the Saturday and the Sunday, there's going to be a lot of people there. And then the following, I think it's just going to be a monster of a queue for you know a good few few months, maybe even a year. Yeah. Like It's just going to be. Yeah. And I think once it's in and once it's open properly, the area is open properly and it's operated a good few times and a few videos have got out here and there. I think people from everywhere are going to come and ride Hyperia. I really do. I think it's, it offers as a coaster, like what we're saying about Voltron. I think that, that for me, no was a coaster in England like it. Right. So I, that Not for really. me would be like, I need to get there and ride this, but this is a reason to go like yeah. a big reason to go to FARP. And I hope people become fans of FARP Park because of it, because it is a great park. It's just, it's been neglected <laughs> for so long. And yeah. this Sparkle project has, has proven that. A lick, a lick of paint on the Colossus sign, you know, it's not enough, but it's it's progress. <laughs> you know, and a lot of people have been going there for years and years and years. Um, and it's the same across Alton Towers as well. What Merlin are doing is they're trying to improve the guest experience overall uh, in the parks yeah. and doing Nemesis Reborn, adding Hyperia, Yes, we know Horizon is delayed, so to speak, and it's sad. But is it because does it give them more time now to do something better with what they already initially planned? Are we going to get some things in between, flat rides here and there? Yeah, you that's know? the thing. Like it's been said that it, like for, it's probably going to be delayed until twenty six. Mm. Meanwhile, in twenty five, um, a lot more focus was. And budget is going to be put on, you know, continuation of uh, just park improvements, thematic thematic improvements, and the addition of flat rides, which yeah. is what that which is what I've been screaming that Alton Towers needs for the longest was just, time. Now. It was a throwaway <laughs> line in an article, and everyone's just like, "What?" <laughs> but yeah, flat rides. Yeah, <laughs> we're getting flat rides. So like, we're getting that's more that's, flat rides. Honest, honestly, in my in my opinion, that's the perfect way to do it. Like, yeah. For the next couple of years, you got to think about Nemesis Reborn. It is it's such a major investment to the park, and it is like they've just built a brand new coaster. It it, it doesn't feel like the same area. Mm -hmm. It has its uncanny valley, <laughs> no pun intended, but it 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 <laughs> definitely feels like a different experience to the OG Nemesis, yeah. and and that's why I, that's why I really 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 fucking love being in that space at the moment. So good. I miss Forbidden Valley so much. Mm. Like <laughs> I just watched the videos back from everyone's videos and vlogs, and I'm like, I need to be there, man. I need to be in that shop and looking around, checking out that model again, just taking photos of the cart screw from you know from mad angles that I can find. And it's um oh you're gonna love that by the way when you do eventually get out and ride Nemesis Reborn is the amount of angles they've given you away from at the actual ride. You can actually see things from different parts of Forbidden Valley now, which oh yeah. Really yeah, yeah, there's yeah, so yeah. many new angles. It's great. <laughs> like just but, in the um, queue line alone. Like I'm gonna yeah. be standing in that queue line, just right, like you going to ride the ride. I'll be like but gesturing what? to people, just go around me. I'm just taking but, photos. <laughs> no, but you don't need to because there's a cutouts. The literal cutouts are there for that reason. You can stand there and take as many photos and videos as you want, and people can just glide past you. Even oh, there you that. go. There you go. Then <laughs> that's what it's for. And that you know, I was literally stood there in one of the cutouts for about 20 minutes, I think, just taking shots of the first drop and the cart screw, and then the whole 
station from from above the first drop, which normally would be covered in foliage. Mm. It's just like a perfect opportunity just to stand there and just film. But um, yeah, I, I, back to Hyperia. It's it's definitely going to offer something that you can't get anywhere else. Um, that first drop is just going to be bonkers. Like I don't I don't even I can't you even see what envision. Talking about now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. I've I've always agreed. It's just it's just um, it, it's just big. <laughs> it's the big cigarette. But it's uh, no, it's it's. <laughs> No, no, the, first time I, the first time I saw that months ago, I couldn't unsee it. It was, it's, I know. It's fucking Rizzler, Rizzler the Ride, Marbler. Yeah, I Marbler know, but it looks it looks a lot nicer <laughs> now. There's more of the track in there. I mean, the low to the ground bits just, you know, that they are what they are. But everyone's going to be looking up at that first drop. You know it. Like, no one takes a photo of the, of the, the big one when it's just gliding underneath. You know, the next mm. to the big dipper, they always take it when it's going over. So... Yeah, I I don't know. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think it's going to rank for you? I'm not really sure, honestly. Um, I've been I've been thinking about it, and uh, I think that that um, what it does do is going to make the perceived length of it or lack thereof negligible. I don't think it's going to need to be any longer to feel satisfying. Yeah. But in in terms of just like how satisfied I end up being with the attraction itself. But I do, th- but, I, but I mean, like, I'm not ruling out it. I'm, I'm not ruling out, I'm not ruling out ranking other rides above it because of that. Not to say that the length will, will contribute some disappointment to the ride. But it may be why I rank other coasters higher. Having said that, what it does do, like the elements yeah. it included in there, are probably yeah. going to have it pretty high for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think the uh, honestly, I think it's going to have the best drop on any conventional sit-down roller coaster off a chain lift. Yeah, for sure. Anywhere, yeah. like. I, like it's going to be at least top three drops in the world, in my in my opinion, at least. Yeah, and well, I, I agree. Like that back that back row going down, like because of how pointy the crest of the drop is, that <laughs> back row in a five car train, it's long enough for it's long enough for the airtime in the back row to just to you know fall be the bottom like before halfway you down the M three. Like to, you'll, yeah, to you'll, be the bottom, <laughs> on, you'll be at the bottom and on the dive loop before you even fucking blink. I reckon <laughs> yeah. you're on the back row of that thing. Yeah, I'll just pull you up. But what's mad is that we're saying all these elements are going to be crazy. Yes, all right, we 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 know a bit about coaster design and stuff like that, but we've not seen it test. <laughs> we've still not seen yeah. the trains arrive. We've not seen you know. There's been artwork of some Mac trains on some of the. Merlin merch at Fort Park last weekend that was shown. Um, how true to I'm life not sure they are, if that's them just know. cheaping out on merch, honestly. Yeah, it kind of looked like, yeah, it, it just looked generic. <laughs> I but, kind of, I kind of think that even the, if it is the, generic, the zero, man, that I, I kind of think it. because do you know what, right? Like the, that winged, um, like graphic on the sign, yeah. It's generic enough, like it, it. It looks, it looks nice, but it's generic mm. enough that they can turn it into some kind of design for a zero car without yep. having to extend themselves and make it like super, you know, intricate of a design. Yeah, they could literally like, I feel the like going up the zero, like going up the zero car, and that would yeah. be enough. Like, yeah, even if they were to take that, and I mean, like, it's not, it's, it's not really a like it's it's generic it's generic in design that zero car that we saw because we've seen it on multiple other mark coasters yeah. we've seen it on icon seen it on helix seen it on i think steel taipan as well like it's generic in that sense but it's not really like the other one before that is more generic than that but yeah. that design is generic enough that a hyperior specific design could take that one and just make the just make the the corners of each you know, you know, fold in it like pointed, yeah, and then yeah, yeah, it lo- yeah. and then it looks like the and then it looks like the the wing design in the side, yeah. something like or something like that. Up the side of the train as well, you know, 
and the foot wells. Like they, they yeah. can do, they can do so much with that with that that simple wing design. I mean, you think of Abney coasters that have wings on them, mm. um, <laughs> and and they always turn out great. Um, the Mac coasters trains themselves. Um, I, I I do think a lot of people, a lot of like, I feel like there's a bit of a rhetoric forming around US enthusiasts uh, perception of Mark coasters just instantly being rattly. I don't know if that's also consistent with how European enthusiasts look at them, but um, like, uh, this is not something I've experienced on Mark coasters. <laughs> like, no, I, like, I've experienced it once on Icon and that was at like 9 o'clock in the morning. Like, <laughs> like it was right. it, once, literally once. Uh, the whole time I've ridden Icon, I've ridden it hundreds of times and once i've only experienced a major rattle mm. um and helix didn't rattle um slinky dog dash didn't rattle <laughs> like, yeah, I, I, so, I didn't rattle for me right so I, I mean i i guess it's just how everyone's ride is so different that's what's great about mm. riding roller coasters everything it's always different no matter what might be the same similar feelings the same uh, time in certain spots but There'll be something about that ride that is slightly different <laughs> than mm. any other time you've ridden it. Might be the person you're with. Might be you might have put hands up in one area you didn't do before. You might have just held on the whole way around or just chilled yeah. out. It's always a different experience. That's what's great about riding coasters. You and every, and everyone um, has different sensitivity levels, like widely mm. different sensitivity well, levels to so subjective to, to say that our coasters to rough. specific <laughs> rattles and shuffles. Yeah, that are that are kind of just part part and parcel when you strap a car onto a onto a onto a track doing aerobatic movements like there's like it's a mechanical vehicle like yeah. strapped strap to steel a track steel. doing things <laughs> in the air. Yeah. There's going to be some kind of not not like not like judder or shuffle or, or, or stuff like physics. I mean, and I mean precision engineering is like obviously a obviously a thing that is evident with like how modernized how much more modernized coasters have become over the years but it's still like it's still a mechanical vehicle connected to a track doing things in the air there's going to be some kind of um you know just like some kind of some kind of move, movement like that as well yeah but people's sensitivity levels to those different kinds of sensations vary massively so you know, one thing that could, like one tiny, like the tiniest little thing that could set off a massive, like a thudding headache for somebody, I don't even register, mm. and vice and vice versa. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah, that is that that is how it is. But the thing for okay, so the thing the thing for me with Mark coasters in terms of comparing them because like you know, right to right to happiness, um uh like helix back in 2014 um dc rivals now hyperia market that beyond the beyond the cloud that ridiculous launch coaster in china <laughs> on that shift Mark is, Mark <laughs> is like firmly in in that conversation with the intermins with the rmcs with the like like you know in terms yeah. of like elite coasters in my in my opinion at least oh well, they are like, yeah yeah they're yeah. firm, they're firm in that conversation b and m as well but <laughs> they're in the they're in the conversation right yeah what i think from my vantage point what i think um keeps them from being right on that level with intermins and rmcs and whatever else is um I think I think a big thing is the force switching and the unpredictability of RMCs and Intamin coasters. Right. They're a lot they're a lot more they're a lot more aggressive in that sense from what I from what I've experienced than Mark coasters still are just in terms of how quickly the transition how quickly how quickly roll rates can change and switch and how forces can change from from positives to laterals to to more positives or like from positives yeah. to negatives and stuff yeah. yeah and things like that and that's kind of just like it's 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 to do with the nature of the design philosophy of how these layout designers 
you know, craft their layouts and stuff. Like, Tiger has one of the most intelligent, you know, layouts, if not yeah. the most intelligent layout on any coaster anywhere. Really want to um, And a lot of it, a lot of it comes down to how it maximizes force switching at different points in the layout to contribute to pacing. Where um, I don't really see a lot of that kind of like the nature of aggressive force switching in Mark coasters so much, which has them like a like not a tier below, but like I kind of think of just like a step below Intamins and RMC. There's, there's one. There's one. And this is being really picky. Yeah, there's we're getting super ready. <laughs> Sorry if anyone's like, what? Are you there's one. About? There's <laughs> one. There's one element on our transition, I should say, on Icon after the non-inverted. Right, you come down and you hit a left, right before you do a turn into the airtime hill. Mm. That feels so intimate to me. That little section, it's yeah, very yeah, quick. Yeah. Um, and when I wrote Taron, I had a similar sensation. So that's where I'm getting that, yeah, co a comparison to. I just wish to do more of it. Like, yeah, I wish to do more of it. I wish to do a a low to the ground, multi launch coaster that just goes absolutely ape shit. And then they'd be up mm. there, I reckon. <laughs> I really do. They don't need to go high to do it. Like Taron's proof that you don't need to go high to make a great coaster. Yeah. Um, and, and I think they could be a bit more unpredictable with what they're going to feel like. Mm -hmm. Similar to Vekoma as well. Vekoma feel predictable as well in the layouts yeah. Yeah. and how they feel and That's how they a ride. Big thing that holds back new Vekoma for me. Um, but I think that once I think Voltron with Mac as well as Hyperia, they're like a newer generation of track yeah designer you know and, and how this how it's kind of like comparing um gci design philosophy to gravity group design philosophy. right yeah the, it, it like i feel i feel like mark's design philosophy and how they um implement it and improve it and how intentional they are with it with the likes of Ride to mm. Happiness and now Hyperia and 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 others bef others before it, they're becoming much more like it's becoming much more of their own, you know, distinct style to the point yeah. where it's not that it's not as like as effective, it's just different. So it kind of comes down to a preference of what of like you know of style within you know. Uh, design philosophy and, and like different design nuances for for layouts and stuff and design and, language as well like the way yeah. that it starts off the area it has to be built in is a big thing about a coaster like Hi Hyperia's area like it's quite big well if you think about it what they've managed mm. to put in there yes they've had to go above and beyond for planning yes they've had to build a lake and fill it in and then build the lake again but I mean <laughs> it's 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 a it's a big area um Voltron's area it's quite a large coaster. Mm. Um, Icon, you could you could argue they were limited, very limited, <laughs> by at least uh, by five foot. Otherwise, it weren't happening on one side. So it's there's so much to take into consideration when you're thinking about what you can throw in here, what you can throw in there, how many elements you can do, like what how can you you can utilize the fluidness of a layout in an area and still. Mm give sensations that are different every time you hit a transition yeah. on a coaster and i think that's or just sensations that routinely hit you like they, they yeah. might they might be the same sensations but like from yeah. right right they routinely hit they routinely hit like yeah. they without air time like, here there will be a tip out here there'll be yeah like yeah. literally they hit they hit the same on the seventh ride as they did on the first and second for sure you know and i think that's where hyperia because it only has a certain amount of these elements going on you've got the crazy first drop you've got dive loops you've got stalls you've got tip outs you've got on pretty much death rolls like <laughs> yeah. like coming out of a tip out and then you've got some nice air time in between there a splashdown potentially as well um mm -hmm. and then a nice pop of air into the break every time because because it's so because it's so big and because its main elements are so kind of drawn out in comparison yeah. like it's not it's not going to ride the same as something like ride to happiness or icon or copperhead strike or something like that no. it's going to be very unique to itself and yeah. just the um just just like the like what it's doing is 
so unique. Like we haven't we haven't seen an outer bank turn first of all outer banked ninety degrees like the way it yeah. is. <laughs> like the the other outer banks that we've seen like on Steel Vengeance and on Condor and Pantheon and Airy Force One, like they don't bank as far as Hyperius does, and they don't transition into a roll on the exit. <laughs> so like, like yeah, uh, like so it's like just what, just what a is high doing? death roll as well, like yeah. so high. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like, like the um, the uh, the laterals going into that going into that element are going to be crazy because it because it rolls to the left really quickly, like on the on the ascent up into it, and then it'll be a bit of hang time because it's going to slow up like up at the top, and then into the in, into the drawn out roll where you're going to be kind yeah. of thinking, are we going to roll through this quick enough to like get yeah. right side up yeah. by the time we get back down to the ground? Yeah. Like there's a there's a lot going on there. And then at night, yeah. like during fright nights, after that thing's been running all day, you get yeah. that roll on the back roll. <laughs> like you're not going to know what hit you coming out of that. That's so like, so that's what makes it so interesting. And then like the Immelman, the Immelman um first of all the height discrepancy between the immelman and the and the top of the first drop is going to yeah. have it sail through the top of it it's going to create a lot and it's profiled in a way that it gets right side up to where it's not actually not inverting so it'll give you a lot of airtime a lot of strong airtime hopefully yeah um like as it goes over the crest of it like it's just doing a lot of it's doing a lot of things a little bit differently and combining things like combining forces and sensations a lot di a lot differently so because of because of all of those just kind of against the grain kind of movements it's going to be yeah. interesting to see how they stack up in terms of where uh, in terms of where the entire thing will rank and stuff it's hard it's, it's hard to really like predict at, it at is. the moment but it's going to be just going back to it's going to be we've bit. not seen a train touch the track yet like we don't mm. even know you know even just out out banks out the bloody station for starters so that's going to be yeah. like brace yourself guys this is going to be you just fucking straight about 236 like bendy ink machine fan said hi <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I did i did see it i did see it um uh, it's ben it's ben Fro uh, it's, be it's, not, uh, it's it's ben um who used to watch our streams on the coast Gen show he saw oh, us the platform. <laughs> yeah yeah right. yeah um so ben, how you doing um roller, roller baz said have b m left the chat no i did mention b m i think it might have not come through the stream but i, I did say i'm uh, being like i did yeah. <laughs> when we were talking <laughs> about like rmc into me and you know i think i'll just go and, like, in here, but, um, yeah. <laughs> i did say it um do, do you want to I kind of feel like letting you answer that first. <laughs> have B have BNM left the chat? He's referring to the comment I made about um like Intamin No, it's because we were Intamin listing off all the other manufacturers and we didn't mention yeah. BNM and I just went BNM as well. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I don't think BNM have left the chat. No, I, I I don't. I think I think they're uh there's always a market for B&M coasters, always. I mean, like, we were just talking about a wing launch coaster, a new one. And then mm. what they're doing with Penguin Trek as well at SeaWorld, that's that's something different. That's brilliant. Like, I love it. The wing coaster they did at Legoland as well, the little tiny thing. <laughs> like, yeah. th there's, a, there's always a market for a B&M coaster. Always. Like, no matter what. I, I don't think they're ever going to leave the chat. Unless they decide to not make coasters. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like they're still in the chat of making elite coasters, though? I think they've got stuff up the sleeve that they've not even started to show yet. I think they're letting... What I've noticed about B&M over the years, and it's just from my standpoint, this is my opinion, when a manufacturer like RMC or Intamin go skyrocketing up to the top of the manufacturer's list that everybody wants, everyone buys and buys and buys and buys, B and M have this thing where they just go, "We're still here," <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, and they yeah. just go, "Whoop!" They just go to right some to degree, the top. yeah. Like, I, and I it's see like, what you mean. and the fact that we're getting stuff like fucking Velocicoaster, Hyperia, Voltron, we're getting stuff like this, Iron mm -hmm. What are B and M doing? Like, what are they doing? Like, seriously, because mm. it's gonna. Don't, don't get me wrong, the retrack of Nemesis is impressive enough, what they've done with that. The fact that they've managed to make it feel like it rides, like, like it just blew my mind when I wrote it. I was like, this is insane. <laughs> like, 
It just felt well. Like- it's just it's just it's interesting to think about that conversation, given what they're evidently <clears throat> what they're evidently not pushing. They're just responding to park requests. But yeah. um, it's interesting to think about them in the elite coaster conversation, given that they're currently giving a lot of parks family coasters. Yeah. Like sea, sea World Orlando's opening Penguin Trek, like you said, Bush Gardens Tampa's opening Phoenix Rising, a little B and M family invert, the and then coaster, the specu- well. and then there's speculation that they might open another one at Bush Gardens Williamsburg in the next you know year or so. Yeah, like, and then the 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 family wings at Chessington. At, at, at Did Chessington you say family and, inversion coaster as well? And they and Bush Gardens Tampa got one of them coming in B and M. Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, was... B&M, um, uh, Bush Gardens Tampa are opening Phoenix Rising a B&M family invert. Like, th- th- I, 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 I've stopped keeping track of years. Honestly, years of things opening. Years. Don't, don't, don't try years. There's too many. Like, we like, need stats. I don't know anyway. when. I don't know when it's going <laughs> to open, but you know, it's it's being constructed well, right on now. Tracks on site is being built. Like, uh, it's being built right. It's being built. It's being built right now. It is. Not as honestly, it's not as small as I thought it would be. <laughs> like it, 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 it looks, never is. We've seen with a C park. It never is. Um, they always surprise me. Yeah. So, I think that because because like um when when B and M opened Candemonium at Hershey Park, and mm. excuse me, that you saw the um the off axis airtime hill that they put on that, and it was kind of just like. Well, B and M are late to the party. In like Mark and Intamin and whoever else did this like fucking six years ago or some shit. But I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Like I'm not. Sh- I'm not sure if I would like B and M B and M coasters are always quality, but I'm not sure if I would like put them firmly in like like wholly in the conversation of just like the like the elite of elite coasters anymore in terms of their um in terms of their manufacturing and as a company i definitely i definitely would because like bnm is still the standard in terms of in terms of manufacturing quality but just in terms of in terms of the products that they've put out i'm like they're not they're not establishing themselves in the like most elite of elite um like just coaster categories, like as frequently as Intamin are and R RM, and RMC are. Now, what's also interesting about that is like during these times where where Intamin and Mark, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, have shown themselves leveling up, like leveling up and giving more of like opening more of these elite coasters, they then drop something like Fury. <laughs> And it's like, oh yeah, B and M are also here. Right? This is what I'm saying. <laughs> you've just literally, yeah, you just literally like give us a, a they, representation they of exactly flying what dinosaur I said. in 2016. Right. And it's like, holy shit, yeah, B and M are also still here. They dropped yeah. Mako that like around right. about the same time, and yeah, it's it's just interesting. I feel like they could just. I don't think they're doing it as frequently as Mark Intamin and RMC, but they could just drop a one thing somewhere, and it's like, holy shit, yeah, yeah, B and M are also like they haven't left. <laughs> yeah, and you've got to think as well, like the international company, so they're doing things everywhere. Like you know, they're, yeah. they're going to have something. The amount of parks they work with, they're going to have something open, lined like, up. Seventeen wing coasters in China alone. How much that? You know? <laughs> that just says to me, I need to go to China and experience all these Winkos because I love Winkos. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, um, I'm exaggerating, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I honestly, I, I think they're still there. I think they're uh, the bit, bit in the Batman phase at the moment. We're just lurking in the shadows, waiting for the, uh, waiting for the perfect time to show themselves for that signal to go up for being. I think signal. they have the. I think they have the capability to just catapult themselves firmly back in the conversation. I think that. I, I think that a lot of parks in the Western world, I think a lot of parks in the Western world, what are you laughing at? <laughs> oh, just the chat. Just Kira going on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think a lot of parks in the, um, in like in Europe and in North America, a lot of parks that would have big B, that, that would have big B&Ms 
already have them. Yeah. So like, there's not much like r- there's not as much room for B and M to establish themselves in the elite coaster category as there used to be. But I feel like I feel like they they have every capability of just placing themselves back in that conversation. They're just serving the market that's available to them at the moment, which is why we're seeing money. All, which is why yeah. the, which is why we're seeing all of these family coasters pop up everywhere. They're making okay. shitloads of money. Like it's got to be for a, a there's, there's the amount of B and M stuff that's popped up. Like even just in SeaWorld and Bush, if you look at it alone, Surf Coaster, Penguin Track. And then this new that's free coasters they've purchased from BM as a company. Like yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like that's crazy. The yeah. amount of money they will make from that is is bonkers. And mm-hmm. they're obviously gonna do what contracts come up for them best. If if, if someone if SeaWorld said we wanna blow Iron Guazi out the park, we want the craziest BM you've ever made. Here's 40 mil, go crazy. Like <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If that ever happened, mm. then B&M would be like, sure, let's load up no limits. Let's go. Like, <laughs> like, uh, and, and they'd do it. And they would do it. And it would be an elite coaster. But no one's asking for it. No one's asking B&M for that stuff. They're asking Intamin. Yep. They're asking RMC. They're asking Mac now, you know, for, for that kind of thing. And I think that's where, uh, when they need a push, B&M, they will push. Uh, I, I think that's kind of what I'm getting at. But they, they will be always in the conversation mm. and they'll always they, they have these how many bucket list coasters did you see growing up that were you know bnms i mean i always go back to incredible hulk like i just wanted to ride that ride so much and i finally rode it and that means more to me as an enthusiast of, of riding a bnm that'll tip you out 90 degrees going 400 miles an hour like i, I don't know why it's just they, they, it's got that home homemade meal feel about a bnm i don't know what it is <laughs> It just feels so nice. I think it's just what we what we grew up, like, yeah. You know, watching in on, like, documents on documentaries on like the Discovery Channel and seeing like Montu yeah. and Alpengeist and Kumba and and whatever else and Hulk, um, just on those and thinking, oh, I would love to get over there and ride those one day. For like sure. they still they still have I still have a soft spot for those nineties for those nineties B and M's, yeah, nineties B and M's because of that and stuff. But then again, when but, I saw yeah. Mako. Yeah. Up, your point about Mako when I saw Mako go up and I got my first ride on uh, Mako in, in Florida and I got front row and then I did back row like I was like damn this is so good mm. why yeah. why are there any more of the, like these type you know hypers that are just just freaking batshit crazy when you know right. it's, just <laughs> it's just I don't know what it is with Mako that that second turn after the first drop is it's tip out central it's so, so much air time it's, so fun. it's, so it's fun. great i don't understand <laughs> yeah. it because it's just a turn you look at it and you think oh, it's just going to be a bank but it's like it throws you out it banks you back and it slams mm. you into an air time hill it's it's that so air great hill goes on forever it's it like flows. six straight seconds <laughs> yeah it's it <laughs> <laughs> it genuinely took me by surprise how much float you got on that damn thing yeah. Yeah, i was dope. expecting like shambhala type airtime on, on on some of it and, and oh and yeah no it's stronger I was, I it, it is stronger back. it's yeah, stronger but shambhala's is pure floater it's like rough. like the purest of pure floater airtime and, and there's more, and there's more it. moments of it make mako's mako's airtime and i promise we'll move on from this from this topic eventually <laughs> But, coasters. But, um, it's a coaster um, podcast, man. We're going deep. That's what happens when you get too yeah, no, um, yeah, <laughs> too enthusiastic to this level. <laughs> like we could just talk about a barrel for about four hours, and we yeah. won't be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Shambhala's uh, airtime is a bit more consistent. Mako's does drop off a fair does a fair bit, like yeah. after after that first hill. Um, but yeah, anyway, um. Yeah. Any, anyway, the switch switching gears a little bit because Kiara wants us to talk about um, minifigure speedway. <laughs> what's going any, on? And what's going on I, there? I I think it's been delayed. I I don't know what the um... yeah. I'm not 100 percent sure on what's on what's happened. I have I have heard that it's that it might let have been me, delayed. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> tell, tell us in the chat, and if it comes in the chat, let me know. I'm gonna have a look. Um, I know it has been delayed. <laughs> Uh, um, she, they wanted to make an anagram joke of Roxy's delayed being an anagram of odd sex yearly. 
which is hilarious. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so but it was yeah, originally no, uh, supposed to be March 29th. I'm just looking on their Twitter now. Hmm. Um, there. I have seen it somewhere. Oh, so opening date has been delayed by know. a week. Apparently. A week. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's all that's cool no, that's fine no that's cool um yeah, it, lo it looks it looks great for legoland we have shown pictures of it before um mm. it looks very good if you're if you're a kid at legoland and the only other thing you've got there is dragon and duplo dino coaster it looks like a nice boom yeah. you know step up into the family coaster market mm -hmm. so when you go to somewhere like a drayton manor and you ride their new coaster might make you want to go on the wave um so and then from there it might snowball. So I hope that um it has that effect on a lot of young enthusiasts. I really do. Um and it pulls them through. That's what it's about. You you've got to have creds for everyone, <laughs> not just you know do you know what what one right guys, one of the hardest things to do in no limits is create a family coaster. Like a simple layout. When I recreated Octonauts, it was the hardest thing I've ever done. Yeah, do you know what's funny, right? <laughs> is that like I've, I've seen a lot i've seen a lot of people making family coasters in no limits recently and i'm like yeah it's interesting as to why people are choosing to because b and m are making them <laughs> <laughs> well like one thing i will give vacoma credit for is that like the family coasters <laughs> that they're opening seem to be all really creative and yeah very being cool. able to uh, add a lot of different thematic elements around them um big bear mountain looks like in, in terms of the coaster itself just looks mega so mega. good like it looks it looks so fun we all we all we all um, game shit for like the lack of theming because it is dollywood but like the <laughs> yeah the coaster is the coaster remember. itself looks it looks like it, it looks like it paces way faster than than it should yeah, <laughs> yeah right <laughs> um, so like like because because of that and and other ones um opening and stuff like I, I feel like i guess people in like in the no limits community are, follow, are following that trend of making uh family yeah. courses in no limits and i'm like why but but then i, re I realize like how much more difficult it must be to um you know make and shape elements that aren't as you know outlandish in terms yeah. of like what they're doing but then also be creative also be fun also be realistic and yeah and um just repeatable i, I guess you're trying to limit yourself to 1.5 g's on a turn in no limits yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's hard it's really hard um i i like the challenge to change, of yeah. I, I like giving myself now an area in no limits I've, I've not shown any of my no limit stuff for a while i mean coasted galaxy world came out with a banger of this peep system mm. um well, shout out to them um and I've been talking to them as well, and it's just so cool to see coasters come alive in No Limits now. Like with people just queuing up. Yeah, it's a ball lake to get people on your ride, but once you've done it, I encourage anyone who's in the No Limits community, if you haven't tried the peep system from Coaster Galaxy World, get out there, freaking try it. It's so good. Um, and you like they put the hands up, they scream, you know, they go, oh, when they, they air time, and it's just it's beautiful. But because No Limits is so coaster centric mm. the amount of old coasters you've done in the past you'll you, you can get people on them and i find it really fun to have a coaster that interacts with the land more than something that just shoots off at you know 400 yeah. foot in the air and but then when there's yeah, people no, involved when you get the people involved and people walking and queuing and, and stepping away from the ride and going in the station in the air gates and the, the whole vibe of a family coaster it's a really nice feeling and it just it gives you that bridge and look I've, I've got a park with an rmc and i've got a park with a coma and it just to become a family coaster and it's like i just love going backwards and forwards because there's a difference yeah um and i think that's what they offer to parks is that different experience and the more family coasters get made drayton manners freaking hell that thing is yeah what I, I still have no idea. <laughs> like, what is that? Like, we're not going to have any idea until it opens. And, no, but that's you know. great because 
family Both coasters yeah. designs intamin thinking outside the box with even the family coasters like we switch tracks and obviously they've done hagrids but this is on like a a smaller scale if they can keep doing this and selling these these models around the world they'll keep building them better and better and better and better and people will want to eventually be part of intamin and they can build family coasters and that's a way in yeah <laughs> you know and and there's more to it like hyperia for example very limited theming what we've seen so far crazy coaster but then if you look at something like saw the amount of i know it's not a family coaster but the amount of theming in that coaster is ridiculous like <laughs> so it's uh, even with this mini sp uh, minifigure speedway they've got the tallest lego character like in the world well see the, uh, and, and the, th the thing is um with you know uh significant let's say family coasters um yeah. Like you look at something like, what's it? What's what's the one at Movie Park Germany called? Uh, oh, uh, like no. the Movie Park Studios, Studio yeah, Tour, yeah. Or something Studio like that. Tour, I think. Yeah, yeah. And then like, um, things like Yvelin at at Dior Summerland, and like those Intamin quad coasters, like the one at um. You said it. Uh, Mark it off the card. <laughs> What? <laughs> in, in, in Quad Coast, you've not said it for a while. All oh, right. <laughs> yeah. We've not talked about Kensington um, for a while. That's why. <laughs> Every park needs one. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Um, like you can you can be in terms of like a themed attraction, you can be so much more creative with those because of the smaller scale and the and the like small scale of the elements and stuff. Like you can have them. You can have significant portions of them be inside as well yeah and yeah. have a lot of um a lot of theatrics and storytelling going on which add to the variability and just uniqueness of that experience as well hell look at yeah. fucking fire in the hole and yeah. and blazing fury like those those ones at silver Dollar city and dollywood like you can make them very significant attractions in a much different way than than you can as thrill coasters and they can yeah. stand on their own obviously depending on how like the degree to which like how much value you put behind that versus you know crazy you know uh crazy thrill coasters and stuff like that's up to you mm, like i have yeah. a friend who has expedition everest as his number one um <laughs> and, and, I love it. and, and stuff like and stuff like that a lot of people um a lot of people prefer hagrid's to velocicoaster um wow. <clears throat> um like it's it's be it's becoming much more of uh I feel like it's just in my vantage point, it's becoming much more of a thing of significance at parks than it used to be. Yeah. And it's stirring up a lot of creativity in design, in just designers in general, not just coasters, coaster designers, but, you know, creative, um, creative teams and stuff. Even and, media, even media yeah. teams like conductor and stuff like that. Like did these people coming out of the woodwork to help on these projects, like, with the Wicker Man pre-show for it. it's just a, a, a little woody, <laughs> but it's yeah. It, but uh, but as a package, beautiful. So I think there's the market for family coasters at the moment. I think they're realizing that they can get them slightly cheaper than these big massive coasters, mm -hmm. and they can still make a mark on the industry by building these really intelligent layouts and really intelligent media packages that go along with it as well mm -hmm. uh, and the show scenes and the theming and but I, I i'm all I, I i love a family coaster i'm so excited for penguin track like <laughs> i really am like i genuinely am yeah. i'm so excited one of my favorite rides in orlando was slinky dogs it's just so cool i just love it <laughs> it's just a, the theming is insane the theming is insane and you're riding a literal slinky dog that's like it's it's mad mm. but just i think people are just catching on there's this new kind of show scene right i'm i like making coasters do certain things what can i make it do in this restriction you know in no limits of, of it has to be can't invert all that stuff be a family coaster and i just think people dig it i think people are finding it um more rewarding in a way like you, you're achieving a bit more than just going on there making a 500 foot ride that just does four spins and mm -hmm. then comes back to the station you're actually trying to build a themed attraction i think that's why a lot of people 
and an Olympic limits community are going that way. I mean, again, look at Coast of Galaxy World with everything that they've done with their rides in 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 their parks. They've all got pre-shots pretty much, and they've all got mm-hmm. these amazing elaborate themes. And it, it makes and if you want to who who yeah. like doesn't care about any of that and just wants to and just wants to you know be sent flying out of the train 17 times still and that's completely fine fine as well absolutely (laughs) fine (laughs) but it's like people who go to blackpool to ride the big one like i personally yeah big one's cool but i freaking love the ghost train i love wallace and gromit i like valhalla when it's working you know I, i like to experience all the different things um will i ride the big one absolutely of course but i will work my way around the park to do these things it's like um at towers went and did curse before i did oblivion for example i just love i just love dark rides i love fam- family attractions with wicker man before we did more stuff as well so it's uh, the, the, the 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 place in a park parks are seeing more getting more out of building these family attractions because they can't go higher they can't go faster they can't build top thrill 2 which we'll get on into a bit they can't build like Hyperia in every park. You can't put the big one in every UK park. Um, but what you can do is build a very good interactive slash family attraction that people are going to queue up for and turn turnstiles. And I think mm. that's what it's about. And if you have to partner with an IP to do that, so be it. You know, parks will, will see the benefit for a certain amount of time. Um, again, it's like what they've done to Shockwave, calling it the wave, putting sit down trains on it everyone was a bit like oh got rid of stand-up coaster but it'll probably be a much nicer experience um moving forward uh, for the park and capacity (laughs) as well Mm. is there anything else is there anything else you want to touch on we're at an hour and a half (laughs) no i'm good um i was gonna touch on the sign we have got we have got some other stuff but i mean like we don't want we don't want to be here nah we we can we can can get on to things um in future episodes but yeah um hi yeah what's happening (laughs) (laughs) what's happening you don't need to justify bluey from ohio (laughs) (laughs) oh nice nice one for joining us mike we're uh, just heading off um but yeah, um, guys, again, if you've got any topics or anything you want us to cover uh, after the show's gone live, the comments are always open on on YouTube. You can get us on Twitter, on X, everywhere else. You can find us. You know where we are. Um, so if you want to talk about something, let us know. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I need to remember to do the outro because I've not done this for a while. <laughs> and we'll see you next Wednesday. See you later, guys. Bye. Peace. Peace. Peace.